Hello everyone, Ronis from Ronis Photography. And today's story is about the three best methods of achieving uh, the best skin tones in Photoshop. So today's story is about the best three methods for achieving your skin tones in Photoshop. So if I can go ahead, this image was taken by Canon Studios and I'm going to put their Instagram link in the description of this video so that you guys can check them out. They do amazing photography. So let's kick in and we start learning about these methods. And before we can do that, I already did the skin retouching for this image using frequency separation and if I told you would love uh, to learn about frequency separation you can see this is the image before after before after you can see the beautiful skin retouching I did and I just did this in just 10 minutes and if I told you love to learn about how I do my skin retouching I'm going to put the link right above here so that you can check out how I do my skin retouching and I did not retouch the hair or do any uh, retouching on the hair for this model. So this tutorial is about how you can get the best skin tones. And let's kick in and we learn about the very first method for achieving the best skin tones for this image in Photoshop. So uh, the first method is going to be the one for using selective color tool, color grade or get these nice skin tones in Photoshop. So just come to your adjustments and I click on selective color and usually reds are usually they work for the skin tone so uh, when I'm working with the reds or my skin tone color grading in Photoshop I usually prefer to add some science to all my images so I'm going to go extreme for this tutorial because I want you guys to see the effect for what this does so I prefer to uh, add science to my reds to around negative 12 and now you see you can see when you pull this up you add greens to the red so I prefer to add science to around I'll put it at negative 12 so I would like to warm up the image a little bit so warming up you come to the yellow channel and pump it up you can see when you pull it all the way up uh, you totally warm up the image completely so we're going to not we're not going to go extreme for this image so i'm going to go for around 19 and if at all you feel like the image is kind of reddish and has so much magenta so you can come to the magentas and uh, reduce on them as you can see uh, now if at all you really want to add contrast to your image uh, still on the red channels remember contrast kind of adds uh, blacks to an image so just come and add a little bit of uh, blacks to the red channel and just slide it you can see it is adding a uh, contrast to this image so just add a little bit of it to around it so if at all you would love to work on each and every individual color you can as well drop down this and uh, you can come to the blacks for instance and uh, intensify the blacks on the hair and uh, the eyebrows and lashes by coming to the black the black slider in blacks and pump it, uh, pumping it up to around uh, 3 you can as well go extreme if at all you wish to you can as well go extreme if you really wish to do that remember when you go extreme you'll be losing out on the details in the hair so just add a little bit of that so i'll go with three so the other thing i want to do is add a little bit of contrast but this time i'm going to be using legacy uh, slider in the contrast so i'm going to come to the adjustment layers and i'm going to come to uh, brightness and contrast so when you click on brightness and contrast uh just come and click on use legacy activate that and we're going to add a little bit of contrast to this image to around two so basically this is all i do for color grading portraits using selective color so i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to show you guys the second method for uh, color grading portraits so let's group all we have done for selective color Let's put these two in a group and you're going to name this uh, this group uh, selective color. Sorry. So that is it. So you can see the before, after, before, after, 
you can see how we have just gotten uh, those beautiful skin tones in just a, a simple click or simple clicks so we're going to deactivate this selective color and uh, we're going to learn about the very second method for color grading and that is uh, the use of gradient maps in photoshop so uh, we're going to come to the adjustment uh, layers right here and we're going to come to uh, we're going to come to adjustment uh the gradient map adjustment option so click on gradient map so when you click on it uh, it is going to bring uh, the different adjustments for uh, the ones you're going to be using for color grading your images and i don't know why my piece was taking so long so it is going to bring uh, this and if at all uh, you don't have this don't worry because you're not going to be using this uh, specific option right here so click on this uh, strip of color and you'll get these different swatches as you can see and let me show you guys uh, if at all you don't have all these we are going to first of all uh, let, let's get try to get uh, these all these swatches so remember we're going to first of all we're going to reset uh, the gradient so that uh, we can have that option here by even sorry about this uh this is going to be more of your default uh your default for the gradient so you you'll have this if at all you have never used your gradient map option so remember for the skin tones we want to add those little warm tones to our image so come to this gear like icon and when you click on it uh, you'll have these different options so look for photographic toning and uh, click on it so you can just come and click uh, ok so when you click ok you'll get uh, these uh, different gradients so remember for skin tones usually they are either uh, these brown or golden tones or this one but for my color grading and uh, doing these skin tone color grading i prefer to use sapia antique so when you click on that option it will make your image like this to completely turn your image so just click ok so you shouldn't worry so what we are going to do right now we are going to change the blending option or the blending mode for this option so come to the blending so this is where your blending is so uh, this option where you see normal right here so when you click right there i don't know why my pc is taking long to uh, do the responding so basically your image is going to look like this yeah so after applying that we're going to come to the blending so this is where your blending are uh, these are the different blending options so you can see you can as well click multiply you can come and i uh, come and click overlay so it really depends on what you're going in for but for uh, my, my color grading for my images i prefer to use either multiply then overlay and i prefer to also use uh, soft light so let me show you guys how these three different blend modes really work for your images so we are going to uh, first of all use overlay and when you use overlay you can see the image has really turned out to be so so warm and what we are going to do right now we are going to uh, reduce on the effect of uh, this overlay option so just come to opacity and uh, uh, reduce on the opacity of that effect to the one of your liking you can see how this has really worked out in just a single click so let's try out uh, the second blending uh, mode or option and we see how that is going to work for this very image so i'm going to put back the opacity to 100 and come back to the blending mode or the blending option and first of all you're going to use multiply so when you click on multiply the image is going to turn out to be like this as you can see and it is going to be really really dark because it has uh, multiplied, multiplied or increased on 
the intensity for the gradient map option. So you're going to come as usual to the opacity and uh, reduce it or turn it down. So you can see how those tones are turned out to be. So let's see the before and after, before, after. So if at all you feel it is too much, you can as well continue reducing on the opacity. So I'm basically showing you guys how these blend modes work. But uh, for beginners, the best blending option is going to be a soft light. So when you click on soft light, uh, this is how your image is going to be. And I think this soft light option is the best for achieving the best skin tones using uh, the gradient maps in Photoshop. So come to the opacity and just uh, knock down or reduce on the opacity of uh, the effect. So you can see this is the before after before after so we have just achieved that in just simple simple clicks so we can now go to our third option so let's uh, put this in a group so let's uh, close this group because we, at the end of this tutorial we want to see what really works uh, best for you guys so uh, let's close this and we can name this a uh, gradient map So I'm just going to name this gradient So what I'm going to do right now I'm going to create a stamp visible layer because I want us now to use uh, the camera calibration option in our Photoshop camera row or the camera row filter for color grading this very image so I'm going to deactivate this layer and I'm going to create a stamp visible layer on top of the frequency separation action by clicking Shift, Control, Alternate, E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer for all we did down here. And if at all you don't have a frequency separation group and you have your layer right here, maybe it is a JPEG image, uh, you can as well not use this option of clicking shift alternate control e on the keyboard you can just click on that layer and duplicate it control j and now you're going to come to filter right here and you're going to come to a camera row filter so i know it's going to take so so long and if i told you guys are learning something from this specific tutorial don't forget to hit the like on this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and yeah right now we are in our camera row filter so we're going to be using camera calibration for color grading this very image and we're going to uh, add a little bit of contrast uh, using this basic panel on ca our camera raw filter. So you're going to come to uh, camera calibration and I don't know where the camera calibration basically is for the latest camera raw. So I'm using photo Photoshop CC 2017. So this is where my camera calibration option is for this camera. So remember, skin tones are usually on the uh, red primary. And so you're going to be playing around with this slider. But first of all, you're going to play around with the red primary slider. So you can, so when you turn this up, you add greens. And when you turn this down, you add magenta. So let's... Uh, add a little bit of uh, greens to this image and let's come to the green primary slider and uh, play around with it you can see you can add greens or yellows to this image so let's add them to around 16 and let's come to the blue primaries and uh, we see what really works best for us so let's add a little bit of so you, basically it is all about playing around with these sliders to see what really works best for you so you can come back to uh, the red channel and you can increase on the saturation so I think that is really fine and beautiful for this image so we're going to come back to our basic panel and we are going to add a little bit of contrast to this image I think that is fine to around 8 
And now let's add a little bit of temperatures or warming up this image a little bit more. So let's uh, put this to around. Let's uh, put a little bit of temperature. So that is fine for uh, the camera roll color grading part of it. So just come and click OK. So when you click OK, it is going to apply the effect onto your image. So let's uh, wait for it because I don't know why my piece is acting up for today. So this is how we have color graded using uh, Photoshop camera roll. And we, are, we have used camera calibration. So let's uh, put this in a group. Or if I told you full the effect is too much, remember we, we first of all created uh, a new layer on top of uh, this uh, other layer right here. So you can just come on that layer and uh, reduce on the opacity of uh, the effect for that camera row effect. So basically this is how to color grade using uh, selective colors. So just come and you can just drop down or reduce on the effect for your color grading in camera row. So let's I put these two in a group so that I can show you guys. So control G. So we can name this uh, camera row. So you can see this is the color grading for the camera row. So this tutorial has been about color grading using the three different options in Photoshop. First of all, we used uh, the selective color option. So this was the before color grading and this was the after. So before, after, before, after. So this is the selective color option as you have seen. Then we came and we used the one for gradient maps in Photoshop. You can see before, after, before, after. So if at all you feel the effect is too much, you can as well come and uh, drop down or reduce on that very effect for what you have done for the color grading. So after using this, uh, first so uh, then we came and used the camera option for color grading this beautiful image. So you can see before, after, before, after. So basically this story has been about how to achieve those beautiful skin tones in Photoshop using the three methods of uh, using the gradient maps for color grading uh, skin tones, uh, using selective color and using camera row option for color grading and getting the best of your skin tones from your portraits. And if at all you love this tutorial, don't forget to like, drop a comment in the comment section and give us feedback about this tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If at all you have just landed on this video from this channel for the very first time. And this Im image was taken by Canoni Studios. They are linked in the description of this video. And I'm Ronix from Monis Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in it another retouching tutorial on this channel and stay safe.